Greetings and welcome to the fifth episode of Morrowind and Morning Interviews. Uh, I'm your host, Dark Elf Guy, and with me today we have Macom, author of popular mods such as the Mero Mero Race and the Morrowind Race Redone series. Hello. Uh, thanks for agreeing to this interview. And uh, real quick, we're going to start off with our first few basic questions. Uh, the first of which is, uh, when did you first start playing Morrowind and the Elder Scrolls in general? Right. Well, when it comes to the Elder Scrolls universe, uh, I'm kind of like a late bloomer, I dare say, because I only started playing um, the whole series, Elder Scrolls series, with Skyrim. That was the first Elder Scrolls game that I played. And um, before that, I never really... I was never really introduced to the entire universe and the lore and everything. And um, I remember that in the beginning it was really weird and I was really weird out by all these weird looking characters and weird looking races and, you know, um, uh, the elves confused me the most because they weren't your, you know, typical traditional elves that you usually see in um, in different games and in different books, but I, I, I think I really um, started falling in love with the whole world um, the more I played the game. And so, yeah, Skyrim was definitely my uh, my gateway drug into into the Elder Scrolls universe. Uh, and then through various channels and various people that I've met who also played Skyrim. Uh, I actually heard of this old game called Morrowind and uh, I was, you know, interested and I figured, well, I might as well have a look. What is this Morrowind thing and why is everybody talking so great about it? And so I went on online and I had a look and uh, I have to admit that I was pretty disappointed because at that point... Um, I was I was one of those players, you know, players who really um, fall for great visuals and stuff like that. My fault, I admit. Uh, but I decided to give it a go, especially since I've seen uh, how much work has been done when it comes to modding the game. And so um, I got Morrowind. I installed it. I immediately installed the uh, different various um, replacers and enhancements and stuff like that. And I started playing it. And um, the more I played it, in the beginning, it was pretty tough. It was pretty difficult. Um, and I have to admit, I didn't quite like it. But the more I played, the more I, I kind of saw the just how great it is, you know, the all that underlining am amazingness of the game that's, you know, beneath the surface uh, and for which you really have to play the game to be able to see it and enjoy it. And yeah, I started playing it and uh, I got stuck. And that was approximately two years ago, somewhere like that. I think it was two years ago. Yeah, and that's also when I slowly started working on um, mods for Morrowind as well. Now, I hear this a lot from uh, Skyrim players that start playing Morrowind, is that they really have a hard time getting into it at first, and a lot of them just sort of uh, burn themselves out after trying to fight a rat and dying. But it, it, is, it is true that Morrowind really does make you work for your enjoyment. Yeah, that's true. That's definitely true. Um, nothing in Morrowind is easy. And um, even after playing it for two years, <laughs> I still play on on difficulty setting of, I don't know, minus 40, something like that, you know, which is like really easy. And uh, even on really easy um, uh, game uh, setting, um, I get owned in the beginning of the game. I get owned so hard by different um, 
uh, creatures and um, thieves and uh, slavers and stuff like that. And in the beginning, it was really frustrating. I was like, oh, why is this happening? Why am I dying so much? Why? This game is impossible. Um, but the more you play it, the more you really see that um, this is not a game where you mindlessly go through uh, through different quests and different quest lines. This is actually a game where you have to turn your brain on, especially when it comes to directions, because there's no um, map markers and there's no um, fast travel like we are used to from Oblivion at Skyrim. And you really have to like turn your brain on, and when your car when an NPC gives you directions that are that are so complicated, it's like go right and then go left, and then you'll see a tree stump, and then you rotate by 100, 180 degrees, and then you continue fifty steps, and then you'll see a lake, and then you have to pass the lake, and then you have to levitate for three steps and then you know like it, it's really complex and it's really complicated so you really have to be focused when when you're playing the game and that's what i what i realized with time that's what i really really like about it um this game even though it's old you know relatively old it's like 10 11 years old uh actually poses a greater challenge um, than than its um, you know successors modern successors like oblivion and then later on Skyrim and that's what what really fascinated me and um, that's why I keep going back to Morrowind. now this is a sort of a, a user submitted question. Uh, do you spend a lot of time designing your character, thinking about the background, and creating custom faces for them? And if you do, does it influence your gameplay at all? Well, um, I have to admit that I definitely got more into role playing ever since um, I started playing Morrowind. Um, and when I say role playing, I mean things like. Um, taking my time and for instance if it's getting late you know it's getting dark and my character is somewhere outside i actually look for um for a settlement or something like that so that i can rent a bed and that i can sleep through the night in a bed and then wake up in the morning and continue adventuring this is something that i never did in in skyrim or uh, oblivion um, in Skyrim, I, I rushed through the game, you know, through different quests and everything and using map markers and really, really abusing it in that way. Whereas in Morrowind, I take my time and I also take my time with characters. Um, while they don't specifically have a background story, I can't say that I'm, you know, when I'm making a character, I'm like, yeah, you're from here and your parents... Uh, were there and before you came here you were this and that no no definitely not but I kind of um, developed the character during my gameplay you know during uh, during the gaming session depending on quests and um, quests that I um, stumble on um, I kind of try to think about what how my character would respond so you know i finished certain quests one way and um with a different character i finished them in a completely different way uh if i was given an option so yeah i definitely do put some thought into my characters i am not making any custom heads yet um at least not for them, because I'm, I'm focused more on actually finishing the mod that I'm working on. The, the whole Race is Redone um, project that's been going on for almost two years now. It's a pretty long time. Uh, so, no, I, I don't need custom heads or anything like that for them. But I do um, 
I do pay attention to what they look like when it comes to, say, armor and stuff like that. Um, for instance, right now, I'm, I'm playing a Nord who, um, who is um, leveling medium armor because I never played a medium armor character before. And um, I actually had uh, the whole ar ordinator armor um, but I remembered that it's, that would be a problem if I was ever in Vivex City. So I actually sold all the pieces of Ordinator armor and I bought Adamantium armor. Even though it's lower in stat and even though it's, um, um, I don't know, maybe visually not as, um, blingy and shiny like the Ordinator armor, and I even could have left, like, I could have left the, the gloves and the pauldrons and the boots from the Ordinator armor, which has a higher armor rating than uh, Adamantium, but I didn't, because I like everything to match, I like everything to, to look consistent. So, yeah, I, I do, sometimes I do sacrifice um logic <laughs> um for for visuals occasionally but you know most of the time if i'm um, if i'm really not satisfied i just throw on a robe on my character and then call it done and that's it now uh since you mentioned it uh, what was your first mod and how did you get the idea for it well my first mod was um Again, a head retexture, um, but I I did it using uh, uh, standard Betterhead's um, meshes. I didn't make my own mesh, and I simply started doing it because I wasn't quite satisfied with um, with the visuals in game. Um, I I kind of am very very of this um, uncanny valley when it comes to using photographs for um, for um, for anything really in game um, because very often it, it 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 doesn't look quite right uh, so I really I didn't feel. Um, I, I don't know, I, I can't say comfortable, but I didn't really feel um, moved. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm missing a word here. But uh, yeah, basically, I, um, I wanted to do something about it. I saw something that I wasn't quite pleased with, and I decided to change it. And that's how it all began. Um, the good thing about it all was that I already did have some well a pretty significant modding experience really um from uh, from previous titles that i did um i've i've been modding since 2002 2000 and 2001 or 2002 i'm not quite sure but on different titles not on morrowind or any other elder scrolls games uh and so, you know, by the time I got there and I wanted to change something, I, I had the knowledge and I had the tools. And for me, you know, it was just a fun little side project that I um, decided to work on. And that's how it started with Morrowind. Uh, now, I'm just sort of uh, curious because a lot of uh, Elder Scrolls modders sort of started out with the Elder Scrolls series. What game did you start out modding for? Right. Well, um, don't laugh. <laughs> but the first game ever that I modded was The Sims, actually. Yes, it's true. The Sims, um, The Sims 1, the old, old game that was released in 2001. I don't know. I don't remember quite right, but that was um, that was actually my first brush in with um, with modding um, and with with video games in general. Um, 
around that time was um, the first time that I got my my first computer. I was um, 14 or 15, I don't know, I don't remember exactly. Um, and that's when I slowly started getting into, into games. Um, definitely not as much as I am into games now. Um, it was, it, 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 they were pretty humble beginnings. Um, but The Sims was the first game that I modded, and I remember discovering the ability to actually make something and, and put it in game, and it appears in this game, and you get to play with it, and you get to see it interact in this virtual world, and it's something you made, and it was amazing. I never knew before that, you know someone who's who's not a professional um someone who who doesn't work in the video games industry that that you could actually do something like that and put it you know into a game and and i was absolutely fascinated and that's how it started for me and um actually thanks to that thanks to all the modding i did for that game and then later for uh, the sims 2 um, I actually honed, well, honed, um, I got better at certain parts, um, my texture making improved, um, with The Sims 2, I actually got a bit more into making meshes, um, and I, I used a program that was called Milkshape 3D, and, um, it's an awful simple program, and it's an awful program when it comes to creating meshes it's it's just it is so simple and so rudimentary you know there's no it doesn't have rotate and stuff like that so you have to like move every single vertice by hand it was it was pretty tasking it was pretty difficult um but i enjoyed it i definitely enjoyed it and i got better at it and I actually got to the point where um, I was, um, I became a featured artist at a site called The Sims Resource. Um, that site still exists, uh, and I'm listed under retired artists. Um, and uh, it, it was a great experience, you know, it was kind of like a minor milestone. Um, thanks to that, thanks to that whole experience, I actually slowly started to discover what I really what I really want to do later on in my life when it comes to you know a career choice so um yeah and 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 with time one thing led to another and um uh, currently I'm here where I am I'm um I'm freelancing I did some freelance work for um several um, video games that are on the market and uh, I'm very proud of that I'm proud of that because you know I'm I'm a modder who kind of got into a semi-professional field thanks to modding and thanks to um, everything that I learned because of modding no, you, you've sort of already answered my next question about uh, what draws you to modding video games, and I guess it, it is there is quite a bit of a allure there of being able to change and alter the world of on your computer screen. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's it's a playground, like a playground for you and uh, for your imagination, and. There are pretty much no boundaries. Uh, well, there are boundaries <laughs> if you're doing, for instance, like scripted work and something like that. Uh, there are boundaries. So um, when it comes to scripting and, and doing quests and everything like that, I stay away from that. Um, I will never do it ever uh, because I'm just I'm so horrible at 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 numbers <laughs> i don't do numbers it's you know in in different like um signs and um uh, uh, all all the various you know like operations and uh 
in and floats and bools and and I don't know what what else is there in in different scripting languages. I don't know. I don't want to know. Uh, I I stick to the visual part. You know, I stick to painting textures and and making meshes now and then. That's kind of where I uh, where I'm more comfortable than, for instance, scripting and and stuff like that. I never scripted a single line um, of code in my life, and trust me, the world is a better place for it. Now, since you mention it, I did notice that all of your mods from Morrowind and all your mods for Skyrim do sort of uh, involve uh, head textures, head meshes, all of that, instead of, you know, anything else, really. Yeah, well... Um, head textures and head meshes is something that in hair textures and meshes is something that I pull from my um, Sims modding days. That was kind of what I mostly did back then. I did use some clothes as well, but um, uh, it was much simpler uh, simply because the um, uh, you know when when you compare games like Sims and uh, Elder Scrolls. Um, visually, there's a lot of difference. Um, you can't really compare them. So um, I don't think that I'm still at a level where I could create um, various content for um, for Morrowind and and maybe other Elder Scrolls titles uh, because it. it it kind of requires a different way of thinking uh, when it comes to design. You know, I, I mean, I could make a t-shirt and put it into Morrowind, but, eh, you know, how, how lore-friendly is that really? You know, really? Is it? Is it, you know, is it something that I really want in my game? No, probably not. Now, if I was able, to make like a, a chainmail armor that looks absolutely amazing uh, and stuff like that, I definitely would make a mod like that. But I'm, you know, I'm taking my time. I'm I'm doing this in small baby steps, um, mostly because I really, really, really want to finish this um, races redone mod that I'm that I've been working on for two years now, which is. Uh, you know, it it's quite a commitment um, on my part. I, I I don't think I ever spent that much time working on anything really. Um, so I'm kind of I'm kind of surprised at myself as well. I'm 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 giving myself a pat on the back. Two years and and I keep going. That's that's you know achievement unlocked. Very good. Um, yeah, I really want to finish that mod, uh, and then on and off, I'm working on um, various hairs uh, that I want to um, see in game. That's kind of like a you know, it's a sugar coated side project that I do for funsies, um, and it's it's going pretty well um, so far. There's uh, ten of them. And um, hopefully, with time, you know, I, I will make more. Um, and it's definitely, you know, a fun mod, a mod that I do for fun. And now, recently, I slowly started expanding into like different parts of the game. So I'm currently working on um, redoing Thirsk, uh, Blood Moon's Thirsk, because. Uh, I recently, I just recently started the the whole Blood Moon um, quest line, and when I got into Thirst, I was I was I was kind of disappointed because I was expecting um, something a bit more Nordic. I think um, that's one of the things that I'm that I was spoiled with uh, Skyrim. I mean, we can talk about Skyrim. How much of a good game is it or isn't? But one thing really stands that I, I personally agree with. They had really, really good um, environmental design and prop design team. Um, if you look at um, the Nordic ruins, and if you look at 
the, the houses and you know the whole architecture um and and um the dwemer the dwemer ruins in skyrim i absolutely love them i'm in love with them they are really they really have this um epic thing about them you know they really do look amazing um that's 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 kind of what i missed in in morwind so you know i saw thirsk and i was like well maybe maybe i can change this and so i dug out the um, the meshes and i opened the textures and um i i made a new texture i made a new floor texture and i liked it and i thought well maybe i could maybe i could fix this as well and then i made a new wall texture and pretty soon I started making like custom banners and um, tapestries and carpets. I just finished the carpet today. Um, and, you know, opening the cell in, uh, in construction set and, you know, adding various different things, you know, like decorations and shields on walls and um, animal furs and uh, changing the lights and everything. And it, you know, it kind of sucks you in, it pulls you in, you start, you start small and then you end up doing something much bigger than you anticipated, much bigger than you planned on doing. But that's the thing about modding, you just, uh, you don't know when to stop and sometimes great things come of that. Oh yes, definitely. Uh, feature creep is something that happens to pretty much all modders, and like a lot of mods, like Danae's mods, have uh, have really been generated just by feature creep. I've noticed. Yeah, you just, um, as I said, you know, the whole modding thing. Um, it's a playground, and you start doing one thing, and you end up you know, creating something that's, you know, when you, when you look back, you, you would say to yourself, wow, I had no idea that I could pull this off. I had no idea that mm, something that I imagined could evolve into something that big and something that, um, time consuming, I, I dare say, but the whole time consuming thing really isn't important because when you get into it, time just flies by and and you don't pay attention to it because you you get in the zone and uh you just you just start doing things and adding it and before you know it three hours have gone by and you've you've done things you never thought you you know you would you would be able to pull off and and that's a great thing that's a great thing um doing the whole process of making mods, you're learning, you're learning new things. Um, and these things could be specific, you know, specific to a certain title. Um, but you are honing your skills. Um, you are learning new things. And who knows, you know, maybe down the line, you will have some benefit from it. I personally definitely did, um, you know, thanks to modding. Uh, I, I, I learned a lot and I, I honestly don't regret a single minute spent um, working on any of the mods that I've ever worked on. Now, since you uh, mentioned your Thrisk mod uh, earlier, I was sort of curious. As a newer modder, would you say you've been influenced more by the recent Elder Scrolls games like Skyrim or Oblivion? I mean, obviously there's a pretty big difference going from Skyrim and its uh, rather more distinct Nordic style to Morrowind's somewhat more generic Blood Moon. Yes, definitely. I definitely was influenced by, by the whole Skyrim vibe. Um, and, and, you know, when it comes to style, um, it, it's kind of understandable. I mean, if you compare games like Skyrim and Morrowind, um, we can talk about budget, you know, more uh, Skyrim had a huge budget and, um, you know, it was really, um, when it comes to visuals, it was really polished. You know, y you had a much bigger team of people working on it. Um, the production time took a lot longer, I think, 
Um, and, um, you know, they, they had more freedom. They definitely had more freedom thanks to uh, the updated engine, which um, supports, you know, features like normal maps and specular maps and, you know, all the bling that um, that's used in, in today's games. Um, whereas Morrowind, Morrowind is kind of like um, uh, a diamond that doesn't, sh it's, that's not shining in its fullest. And, and that's, that's exactly the beauty of it. You know, it's, it's not grand, you know, it's not big, it's not in your face, you know, like, wow, look at all these amazing structures and look at all the, you know, all the amazing lights and shadows and shining and great big halls and stuff. No, Morrowind is, is much more modest. Um, but that's just, that's just it. When it comes to Morrowind, uh, it's modest and it's been left to the modding community. And um, that's, that's actually a great thing. You know, we people, not a lot of people have played Morrowind. They either started with Skyrim um, or maybe Oblivion. And um, from now on, all the future Elder Scrolls titles definitely will have a larger player base thanks to Skyrim and uh, thanks to, you know, all the marketing and and um, the PR work that's been done um, promoting the game, which, of course, Morrowind didn't have. Um, so Morrowind is pretty much left in the hands of, of people who love it. And that's a great thing. That's an amazing thing because right now Morrowind is... Um, is it's in our hands and we get to really polish it and make it uh, into something that that we think it deserves and we think would look really good. And this is why I really think that Morrowind will, um, with time, thrive. It will become better and better, especially with Open MW just being around the corner and um, hopefully being finished soon. Um, but to get back to, to, to the first question, uh, I kind of got away from it all. Um, visually, yes. Um, my Thirsk redesign will definitely be more inspired by Skyrim's, uh, Nordic theme. Um, there's going to be like plank walls, um, uh, stone tiles on the floor, um, rugs and banners and tapestries. Um, um, I don't know what else. Uh, different pelts. I, I definitely plan to um, maybe populate it a bit and, and, and make it pop a tiny bit. Just so that, you know, when when a player is, is playing the game with, with that mod, they can go into Thirsk and they can be like, yeah. Okay, this this kind of feels epic. This kind of looks like a real warrior's meat hall. And um, hopefully my mod will accomplish that. I hope. I don't know. Um, some people will like it. Some people won't. That's perfectly okay. You know, that's that's how things are. Um, but yeah, if, if I do manage to capture just a tiny bit of that um, essence... So to say, then I will definitely, you know, say, okay, I, I did a good job here and uh, I'm ready to move on. Now, sort of going into that, uh, do you believe that the vanilla style or feel of Morrowind should be preserved in modifications? Or is it not that important as making what you want? Well, I think it depends. It depends from player to player. Uh, some people really um, have really fallen in love with the original visuals and the original style of Morrowind. And they, they really want to keep it um, because they like it. They like it just like that. And I, I respect that. I definitely respect that. 
And even when it comes to my mods, um, like the races redone, I actually use vanilla heads as um, as a thesis, as a reference point. Uh, when it comes to shaping the head mesh and making the head texture so that, you know, the features are as similar as possible. Like, they all have the same face face tattoos or war paint. Um, if the character has an original uh, vanilla, if they have slanted eyes, I'm going to make them with slanted eyes as well. Um, if they have a specific um, war paint on their face, I'm going to recreate that exact same war paint on my face. So um, there is a reason why um, why Morrowind is loved so much uh, when it comes to its visuals. They were they were very specific and unique. Uh, technically, I, I'm saying this from a professional standpoint point of view technically they maybe weren't as great um there definitely could have been a bit more love uh put into them specifically textures but you know who am i to judge uh but um you know spite of it all spite all the flaws let's say flaws um more when it's still played and it's still loved and it's still you know it's still being worked on again as i mentioned open mw uh so vanilla definitely has its charms um but you know nothing if you're a modder nothing is stopping you from trying your hand and uh, seeing where it goes seeing how it turns out all right, and uh, this is sort of going off into a different topic. Uh, have you been influenced by any non Elder Scrolls games when you mod? I know the answer is probably yes, since you mentioned you sort out modding with uh, The Sims and all that. Uh, yeah, um, The Sims modding was um, uh, in in certain parts it was. It's it's kind of similar to um, Modern Morrowind, specifically The Sims One, where the head meshes uh, were pretty much the same as in Morrowind, except they weren't animated. Um, you would have one head mesh, and uh, you would have a head texture slapped onto it. And so, you know, when you were making a new head, you had to paint the whole um, whole head texture. Um, the only difference is that uh, in The Sims, uh, the hairs weren't exchangeable in The Sims 1. They were attached to the head mesh itself, so you practically painted the head along with um, uh, the hair, along with the head texture. Uh, so, yeah, uh, modding Morrowind and making those heads, I definitely do feel that, that bit of nostalgia and remembering what it was like back back then when I was doing it, which is oh, almost 10, 12 years ago <laughs> when I was doing it. Um, and I think that's, that's why I really, um, I really got into this whole um, project of making these new heads. Um, it's definitely a bit of nostalgia mixed in with, um, um, with the opportunity to try something new, try something different, and see just how much, um, just how much I can learn from it all, and seeing just how good I can make something. Now, uh, do you find a lot of inspiration for mods while playing Morrowind? And if yes, uh, what mods were they? Well, I can't really say that I um. Uh, I find a lot of inspiration from Morrowind simply because uh, I haven't made that many mods yet. So I, I can't give like 100% honest question. But yes, um, if, if, you know, if I had to choose, uh, I would say yes. Um, the, the whole Thirsk idea came from, you know, entering Thirsk and seeing that it's 
uh, not as I imagined it to be. <laughs> so, you know, and that's where I got the idea. Well, maybe I should just, maybe I should change the walls and the floors. And that's where it all started. You know, you start with walls and floors, you end up creating 15 different cells, uh, which I won't be doing. Don't worry, everything will be compatible. Um, same with heads, you know, started playing with, with, um, MSGO, which I installed right after I installed Morwen. Seeing the heads and thinking, well, maybe maybe I can, you know, add my own touch to it. And, you know, one thing led to another. And before I knew it, the whole the whole mod thing just rolled into a giant snowball and uh it, it still keeps going. Um same same thing could be said for um, the skinned hairs mod. I just wanted to see if I could do it. You know, I wanted to um, see if I could port some of my Sims models uh, into Skyrim. Uh, sorry, into Morrowind. And um, it, it took a lot of reading and a lot of hair pulling and cursing and a lot of coffee. But I, I actually managed to do it, and um, I was I was actually really proud of myself because um, that was pretty technical when it comes to uh, you know assigning a mesh and um, fiddling with it in NIF scope and changing various settings and struggling with invisible mesh that doesn't render in game, and so you have to troubleshoot and you have to go through different um settings yeah that's that's my dog sorry um so yeah uh it was definitely um uh, an achievement by itself to be able to to make those hairs and port them and um yeah i'm pretty happy about that i'm pretty happy that i managed to um to pull it off now, since you mentioned your Thrisk uh, project again, I, I was sort of curious. Um, when you were describing uh, the Skyrim landscape earlier and sort of the disappointment of Solstein, I, I, I was wondering, uh, have you tried out Wallaby's uh, Solstein overhaul? Yes. Uh, yes, I have. I, um, I installed um, the uh, Tomb of the Snow Prince um some time ago but i had some issues with um uh collisions on different plants and everything and back then i i didn't know how to fix it myself uh so i removed it and another thing that i um experienced uh was a bit of a lag uh on my computer which is not really you know it's not up to date it's a it's a pretty old potato so uh, I, I, I really couldn't enjoy the mod to its fullest. Um, what I could see from it, what I could see uh, while I was playing it, was that it really, you know, a lot of time and a lot of love went to, into that mod, into making it. Um, and definitely kudos, you know, to him and, and, and for making it. And I've actually been following um, his progress on 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 the newest version of uh, Tomb of the Snow Prince, which is kind of be it's it's been really slow lately. So I'm really hoping he's going to get off his guar and 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 continue working on that mod because there's actually people waiting for it. So you know, wink wink, nudge nudge. Uh, yeah, I'm waiting for the newest um, version. I'm really looking forward to it, especially because it has, um, from what I've seen, it has optimized meshes, uh, which is really great. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, so yeah, that's definitely one of the mods that I'm uh, looking forward to and uh, hoping it's going to be finished relatively soon. Uh, no pressure there at all, right? Yeah, right, you know. Take your time, no pressure, really. I'm just I'm just sitting here waiting and waiting and waiting. Yeah. 
Now, sort of going back to just uh, modding in general, uh, do you do any planning before you start a mod? And if yes, how? Uh, no. I don't do any planning at all. I'm, um, I'm a creature of chaos. Nothing, nothing I do makes any sense. Uh, planning just <laughs> involves too much brain power for me. <laughs> and uh, I just, you know, when it comes to modding and when it comes to creating the mod, it's, it's more of a spur of a thing moment. And um, I'm also very impatient when it comes to um, uh, different things. I'm, I'm not a very patient person. So sometimes it gets the better of me and I rush things and um, they end up being maybe not as good as they could have been if I had, you know, taken my time and planned everything out and uh, sorted everything that needs to be done. Definitely um, um, uh, a flaw on my part. But, you know, from this chaos um, in which I operate and within which I function, actually things come out relatively clear and clean, surprisingly. So, um, no, no planning. Um, but I definitely should try that at least once in my life. Plan something and then uh, see how it develops. That's that's definitely on my uh, to do list. Now you're sort of the uh, the first person on this interview series to say you don't do any planning. So I'm just sort of curious that are you just sort of spontaneous? You know what you want right away and you make it. Well, um, uh, when I get an idea, it's it's relatively general. Um, rarely it's, you know, a bit more specific, um, than I, um, than I want it to be. So, you know, I, I just get a general idea and I sit down and I just, I start doing it. I immediately start doing it. And then, um, as it evolves, you know, as the process evolves and keeps going, I, I keep going back and forth and back and forth and changing and fixing and adding and, uh, taking and and modifying so the whole process is pretty chaotic and uh if my process was a bit more streamlined then i i i guess i would be faster i definitely would be faster but i don't think i would have as much freedom i enjoy the freedom of of doing it in this uh chaotic way because nothing is set in stone and if i change one thing um, and I continued working on it, and uh, after some time I look back at it and I see that I don't like it, I just go in and I change it immediately. And sometimes I end up changing things like five times and, and fixing it ten times. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's pretty chaotic, it's pretty, you know, messed up, but um, it, it definitely feels more natural to me. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm that kind of a personality uh, where, you know, nothing is, nothing is like specifically set and nothing is uh, written in stone and I can pretty much change everything on the whim when I like it and where I like it. Now, sort of going into a different topic, uh, do you listen to any music while you mod? And if so, what do you like to listen to? Yes, I, I listen to a lot of music. I um, I don't think I could I would be able to work without music um, because I need that you know I need that background I need that um, murmur in the background and also I've discovered that music is very uh, inspiring as well. So I listen to a lot of music. Depending on which project I'm working on, depending on what I'm working on, I listen to, you know, different things. Um, so, um, Morrowind soundtrack is very often on my playlist. Uh, Skyrim soundtrack 
as well, uh, especially the um, Skyrim atmospheres, which is very, very ambiental and, um, uh, you know, you, you hear birds chirping and wind blowing and stuff like that. And I really like that track. And especially because it's like 40 minutes long, so uh, I don't have to, you know, click and change everything the way I want when when the song ends. Um, so yeah, when I'm doing fantasy stuff, be it mods or uh, doing illustrations or stuff like that, I do listen to fantasy. Um, when I'm um, doing something that's maybe a bit more contemporary or sci-fi, um, I listen to different things. I listen to, I don't know, um, Ghost in the Shell soundtrack or um, uh, Deus Ex soundtrack as well. Um, so yeah, music definitely plays a big role um, in, in, in everything, really. Uh, and I listen a lot to it. It's, um, it's definitely helped me pull out of uh, s some situations where I, I felt uninspired and I really didn't know what to do. And then some epic track would start playing and I'd be like, yeah, that's exactly what I needed. So let's just go and do it. Oh, yes, definitely. I think music plays pretty much a big role in just about a lot of creative activities because it's very, it's always, it gets you moving. Yeah, definitely. Um, a good tune can really um, get your creative juices flowing, which is why um, uh, Jeremy Soul, um, it is Jeremy Soul, right? I'm, I'm so embarrassed right now. I don't remember uh, the name of the main composer for The Elder Scrolls. Um, oh, yeah, it's, it's Jeremy Soul. He's actually, he's working on a... Uh new album right now i believe yeah he's he's really um he's really like he's hit the note so to say uh when it comes to morrowing when it comes to oblivion when it comes to skyrim um they all like they they use the same melody they use the same um basic melody which is kind of the melody of the elder scrolls um, which is, you know, very recognizable for the title, but he manages to compose it in, in, in such a way that it feels... Yeah, sorry. Um, uh, he definitely managed to um, compose it in a way that it feels unique to every title. So um, the Morrowind's uh, theme is very classical, you know, it's very, it, it kind of, certain notes feel very um, alien, so to say, kind of like the world of Morrowind as well. Whereas um, Oblivion's soundtrack has this very um, nightly uh, paladin kind of uh, uh, tone to it. And, you know... Then you have Skyrim, which is all Nordic and really like, you know, strong, um, epic sounding, you know, male choir. And, and it's really, um, he really managed to, to hit the note of, of various different titles um, and, and settings of, of, of those titles while maintaining the same melody. And I really, 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 really like what he's done with it. Oh yeah, he is a very talented composer, and he's actually working on something new right now called uh, Northern Winds, I believe, which is another sort of Nordic-themed uh, soundtrack. Well, I will definitely be listening to it <laughs> once it's done and released. Uh, I think he did some work for um, Guild Wars, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah, I believe he did uh, pretty much all the Guild Wars soundtracks. I have a few of them on my hard drive. They're pretty good. Yeah, I never played Guild Wars, um, but uh, I, I did listen to the soundtracks and I did listen to um, 
Uh, I listen to soundtracks of various games, um, and I definitely could recognize, you know, that that, that subtle Jeremy Soule touch in in the in the soundtrack of Guild Wars, and um, it sounded very um, very familiar, and and that's kind of the thing that I really like. Um, something that I um, haven't really noticed with the Elder Scrolls Online even though I haven't played it, but I have been listening to um, to the soundtrack. And it, it's kind of weird um, seeing an Elder Scrolls title without um, that music that kind of, you know, feels familiar and that you kind of tie in with a certain title. Oh, yes. Uh, Jeremy Saw, I don't think, did any real music for The Elder Scrolls Online. They saw some pretty good tracks, though, but it is a very different. Yeah, I just... I don't know. T- uh, to me, at least when it comes to music, Elder Scrolls is Jeremy Saw. And um, that's kind of the connection that I, I think really works. And that's something that um, a lot of people recognize... Uh, especially uh, when it comes to the main tune of the title and, um, you know, when you hear the melody and when you hear it rolling in and you get the, all the goosebumps and, uh, and and all the memories come flooding in and you re- remember all the, um, all the different adventures that you had with, with that soundtrack playing in the background. Um, and I definitely understand uh, the people who played Skyrim's DLC Dragonborn, um, which takes you back to Solstheim. Um, people were writing. I, I remember reading on the forums. People writing, um, like, "Yeah, I heard. I heard the. Um, I heard the melody of of Morrowind in there, the road most traveled, and stuff like that." And I got old goosebumps and and teary eyed. And I remembered all the adventures and everything. And I, I have to admit, back then, I didn't really understand it because I wasn't playing Morrowind at the time. Not as much as I am now. But now I do I do get it. I definitely do get it. I do get this connection um, between, you know, great music and a great uh, gameplay experience. Now, uh, sort of changing topics, uh, a lot of your mods, really all of your mods, uh, involve making new models and textures. Are there any particular programs you like to use for this purpose? Well, um, Photoshop is is my basis. That's uh, my alpha and omega when it comes to making anything, really. Uh, I think Photoshop's the most open program on my computer. Um, so, yeah, Photoshop, definitely. Um, honestly, I don't think I would be able to do anything without it. I've, I've grown so much accustomed to it, and I've got to know it so much uh, into depth that I really, um, you know, I have all its tools on disposal, which is great because I know all the tools that it has on its disposal. So I'm really able to um, uh, pull out of the textures um, exactly that which I want. So that would be like the beginning of everything. Um, 3D Coat, which is uh, also another program um, used for various different different things. Um, you can uh, do UV maps with it. You can do vox- voxel sculpting with it. Uh, but I mainly use it for um, projection painting, which is a method where you, um, you you take a texture and you put it like a stencil in front of your model, and then you just paint away. Um, and the texture kind of gets slapped onto your model. It's a really great technique. I used it for um, doing the textures for um, our, our mods series um, Azura stage Statue Replacer, which is on Nexus as well. Um, and it's a really great program. I use it for, um, for painting textures on my heads. 
um, in link with Photoshop. So, you know, I like I pose ahead and uh, there's an option where I can click to edit the projection in, um, in the, an external program and that projection opens as an image in my Photoshop. And so I can, you know, like paint on top of it um, and then save it and open it back in 3D code and all the changes, you know, all the painting that I've done automatically applies to my model. It's, it kind of sounds complicated when I'm saying it like that and describing it, but um, if you see it, you know, if you were able to see it, you would see just how, um, how great and how intuitive it is. And that's definitely uh, one of the reasons why I use it. Also, um, UV mapping, uh, because it has an amazingly simple and intuitive um, uh, toolkit for creating UV maps. So that's that's one of the things that I use it as well. Um, when it comes to meshes, um, 3D Studio Max, although I am not very familiar with it, I can do some basic things. Uh, but um, when it comes to, you know, like more elaborate stuff and everything, it kind of gets too technical for me. So I, uh, <laughs> I, I kind of use it for the most basic thing, like moving vertices while shaping uh, my heads uh, from the basic head mesh. Um, and um, animating the head mesh, which, is, which was also one of the things that I had to learn. And it was, um, it was time consuming, uh, hunting down all the information that I needed. But uh, I somehow managed to make it work. So yeah, when it comes to 3D, um, 3D Studio Max. But what's great about all these programs is that uh, today you have programs which are pretty much free versions of those, um, you know, of those like professional standard programs. So you could, you know, um, instead of Photoshop, you could use GIMP. Now, I never personally used GIMP, but um, from what I've seen, people are able to do really nice stuff with it um, and uh, um, create really good looking textures. Uh, instead of 3D Studio Max, you could use Blender, which is also a free program. Um, and again, from all the mods that I've seen, uh, it's pretty powerful. It can, you know, it can pull its weight. And uh, the more you get to know it, the more you will be able to do with it, of course, like with any other program. Um, when it comes to 3D sculpting, um, um, you could use Sculptress, which is also a free program. Um, and basically what it enables you is to import a head well, a head, any mesh really into it. And then you can subdivide it and you can sculpt um, like like a piece of clay. You can sculpt on it. And, uh, you know, you can like sculpt all the different um, detailing and things like that. Um, and if you're wondering, well, why would I do that? Why would I do something like that? Can I just paint a texture? Well, yes, you can, but 3D sculpting is a method that's very often used in, well, very often, almost always used in in uh, modern game industry. Of course, they use other programs such as ZBrush, but Sculptress is a pretty ch pretty cheap. It's free. It's a pretty good substitute um, for that program. Um, also, X Normal. Um, it's a great little program for baking out maps. If you're familiar with the um, with the process of creating um, game assets, um, uh, then you should know what baking maps is. However, if you're not um, to really simplify it to the to the most basic thing, you have a um, basic mesh which is low poly and has UV maps, and you have a high resolution mesh which you've say. Uh, exported from Sculptress after you subdivide it, I don't know how many times, and you sculpted in all the tiny little details and everything. 
and then you open X normal and uh, you import the high re the high resolution mesh and the low resolution resolution mesh, and you bake out various maps like um, ambient occlusion map, which is excellent for um, for using as a base texture upon which you can then uh, continue painting. Uh, normal map, which is also a great thing, especially with open Morrowind um being around the door and we will where we will have more options uh uh and to, in using various maps normal maps included so yeah um anyone listening to this if if you're really interested and if you really um if you really want to uh find a bit more information um just google you know um no, map baking, um, uh, mesh sculpting, and um, you will find some great info um, regarding uh, those terms. So yeah, it, it it may seem like a pretty complex and complicated process, but it's it's really it's not. I mean, if someone as <laughs> chaotic and and all over the place like me was able to to pick it all up then you should be able to pick it up fairly quickly as well. Now, uh, since you sort of mentioned it, and you mentioned it earlier as well, you are actually a professional in the video game industry. So I was sort of curious, has your experience working with uh, video game development influenced your modding at all? Well... I'm I'm not really um, what you would say a professional professional. Uh, I'm a freelancer, and um, I actually had the opportunity to work on on some titles uh, that aren't really famous, and people probably haven't heard of them. Um, and the things that I did for them are, are actually pretty different from what I'm doing um, for Morrowind. Because, you know, when you work professionally and when you work um, with a team, uh, you don't always get to pick what you want to work on. Uh, basically, you do what needs to be done. Um, the latest latest professional gig, so to say, um, that I've worked on was for um, Starpoint Gemini 2, which is an excellent game. And I'm not saying this because I worked on it. Well, not entirely. Uh, I'm saying this because uh, it's it's one of those games that actually kind of sort of reminds me of Morrowind. It is a hidden gem um, that has its own modding community. You can actually mod that game. And um, uh, I'm, I'm actually really proud that I've been work that I that I was, you know, working on that game. Um, the stuff that I did was mostly texture painting, um, sky cubes, um, painting all these various universes and nebulas, and, and um, it, it was a challenging task, but it was a fun task. It was definitely fun, and I learned a lot. Um, could I apply the knowledge uh, that I, you know, all the things that I've learned from there into Morrowind? eventually if i ever was to i don't know paint nebulas or stuff like that um but so far if i had to um if i had to weigh in did my work um influence my modding more or did that or did my modding influence my work more i would definitely say the latter my modding definitely influenced my work more because all the knowledge that I'm using in in my work actually comes from my modding days. You know, learning about meshes and textures and what UV maps and you know and and, and all the technicalities. So um, yeah, modding has been um, really a changing thing uh, for me. And uh, thanks to modding, I'm here where I am right now. Now, modding really is, you know, sort of a big creative gateway. It's like, it's where you begin to start learning new skills that you might use in the future. And I, we sort of mentioned it in past interviews, but it's a, it's sort of 
an outlet to become more creative. Uh, yeah, it definitely is. Um, people who get into modding, people who go into creating mods, um, are people with that certain creative streak about them. And um, it's, um, it's, a, it's a great way of following that streak and, and just seeing where it, where it leads. You know, it might, will not lead anywhere, but, you know, making a couple of mods and releasing them somewhere. But, you know, people play with it and um, you end up with people really liking it. And thanks to that, you get to meet new people, you know, who, who contact you and say, hey, I really like your work. And so you get some acknowledgement for for what you've done. And then, you know, you some people continue following that streak even more and more and more and eventually end up uh, working in the industry in, in, in one form or another. Um, this is really um, something that... Uh, is actually starting to um, become more and more apparent, um, especially lately with um, with the development of um, of the video game industry, which is growing year by year, both in size and in income, um, especially the market for mobile games. Um, so yeah, I think that. Um, Modding can definitely be um, a way to start for some people, and um, you just you just never know how and where it's going to end. It's all up to you. Now, uh, sort of moving on to a uh, a different topic, uh, do you find modding for Morrowind easier or harder than for Skyrim? Hmm, both. Uh, easier and harder. Um, easier because um, Morrowind's structure is a lot simpler. Um, for instance, when you're creating characters, there are no morphs. You don't have to worry about morphs and, um, uh, you know, uh, making five different meshes with exact same skin order. Um, and, uh, I don't know, dismemberment parts and stuff like that. Um, concerning that, it's simpler. Morrowind definitely is simpler. But it's harder because it doesn't have some capabilities like Skyrim does. For instance, talking about textures here, um, normal maps. It doesn't support normal maps natively. The original... Um, unmodded uh, Morrowind engine. So, you know, you have to paint in all the all the texture changes into the diffuse texture itself. Um, same goes with specular maps, uh, although there are, um, I think Morrowind does support gloss, gloss maps, but I'm, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Um, it's the simplicity of Morrowind is... Um, making it easier in certain parts, but it's also making it more complex in other parts because you have to think in a different way of how to achieve uh, and how to get the same result. Whereas Skyrim, um, you have a lot more on your disposal, but at the same time, you have, you know, uh, a lot more on your disposal. There's a lot more that you have to think about. And, um, uh, the field where you can you can make a mistake is much larger. You know, it's much simpler to make a mistake because there's so much more that you have to keep in mind with various file types and, uh, um, you know, morphs and where everything links and how the scripts are going to, you know, handle that and whether your script is good or not because... Uh, in Skyrim, the script gets baked into the game, and so you have to be very careful. So, it, you know, it's it's kind of where where one where one shines, the other isn't that great. But then again, it has some other things where it shines, and uh, the other game really can't 
measure to it. So, uh, yeah, I, I just think that depending on whether you're doing mods for Morrowind or Skyrim, it, it requires a slightly different mindset and um, a slightly different uh, way of thinking and organizing, definitely organizing. Now, sort of going into that, uh, what do you think of Open Morrowind? Uh, particularly since uh, Open Morrowind, I believe, does support normal maps and uh, all of that. And do you plan to make any Open Morrowind-only mods once it's released? Or do you think you'll keep making mods that are compatible with both engines? Uh, I am very much looking forward to Open Morrowind. Uh... I'm on that site. I uh, check the forums regularly, seeing, you know, looking at the progress and watching the, the feature videos and everything. I am following it um, because I think it's going to be um, a great thing. At least, you know, that's my point of view. Um, one of the things, you know, that I mentioned uh, is that it's, it's going to expand the play field. <clears throat> it's going to give us more options. Um, it's going to give us more possibilities. And uh, that's something that I'm really looking forward to. And um, when it comes to modding, um, I don't know. If, I, I, if I'll be around, I will, I will definitely continue making mods for um, Morrowind and OpenMW. Um, what I'm really, really, really looking forward to, something that I'm anticipating um, is the ability to completely change the character system um, namely adding adding a new skeleton that's uh, that's not as worked up as the original um, vanilla Morrowin skeleton and then um, eventually you know developing developing from there um, hopefully removing the bounding boxes from NPCs because God, I hate those boundary boxes <laughs> and, and, and NPCs blocking you uh, wherever you go. Um, and just, you know, expanding on that and uh, maybe even creating something similar um, that we've seen in Skyrim. Now, Morrowind it certainly does have quite a few limitations when it comes to uh, bodies and NPC skeletons. Um, besides uh, better bodies, and I think Robert's bodies. We don't really have a whole lot in that category. Yeah, and um, uh, it really shows that um, uh, people have noticed um, a certain lack of visual um, interest, so to say. And so, you know, slowly we started getting... Um, uh, uh, finds like like better better bodies, um, which is a great. I use it as well, even though you know it is slowly starting to show its age. Um, Moranar, she's she I think is doing a great job with um, converting Rob Robert's bodies from Oblivion, um, even though they are you know higher poly, uh, but. Then again, it, it, it is justified because uh, we don't have normal maps, so you know you you have to pull that shape from from a higher poly count. Um, yeah, I um, I see why why um, there was such a need for a mod like that, um, and I'm definitely looking forward to the ability to expand. Um, upon that later with Open MW once it's released, uh, and hopefully we'll get more body replacers that are um, that offer a bit more variety. Uh, even though I am honestly, I have to admit, I am hoping that uh, Morrowind will never go through what uh, Skyrim and specifically Oblivion went through. Uh, I'm not here to judge anyone's uh, play style, really, like respect to everyone. But some of those body replacers that we've been um, exposed to really kind of flow into um, into that area of fetish, <laughs> uh, specifically um, male 
fetish. Um, again, I can't really judge, and it's not mine to judge, but secretly I do hope that that doesn't happen to more world as well. No, I sort of know what you're talking about. Uh, I mean, a couple of years back or so, I mean, the Oblivion Nexus site in particular, it always seemed like there was some sort of, uh, well, erotic mod, or several actually, on like the Hottest Files page. Yeah, and, and the same is happening with Skyrim as well. Um, there's a lot of skimpy um, models out there that you can... Um, download um okay i mean you know that's that's the way certain people play their game um again who am i to judge uh for me personally no uh because you know um uh, i don't know uh when i'm playing character i like them to wear armor i like them to be you know be it male or female, um, to me, the um, that character on the screen isn't uh, isn't an object. It's a subject. You know that character is me. That character represents me in that world. And and I think that's like the basic difference of seeing um, of seeing the the player character within the game. Um, seeing it as a subject versus seeing it as an object. Um, I guess the people who use skimpy mods and, and stuff like that see the characters in game more as objects, um, as as um, like a visual um, thing, so to say. Uh, something that visually pleases them, which is why they mod their games accordingly. Uh, versus, you know, people who um, who see the NPCs and particularly the PC as as an extension of themselves. Um, this is why um, I'm all for, you know, like really uh, mods that really cover your character or um, um, if they're revealing, you know, if they're skimpy in some way, that there is a certain justification behind why it's skimpy. And I do have to admit this is a professional uh, a professional deformation on my part. Um, when I'm doing illustrations and everything, I when I'm designing a character, uh, one of the most important things that I ask myself is, who is this character? You know, who he or she is as a person. Um, so this this entire personality part is important to me, plays a huge role for me, and this definitely reflects back into um, into my gameplay. Be it I don't know Morrowind or Skyrim or Dragon Age or I don't know any other game that I've played so far. Now, uh, sort of going into that, what do you think? about the other Elder Scrolls games in comparison to Morrowind and also sort of the communities. Right. Um, well, each of those games has um, has a certain something that, that is really appealing to me. Something that made me fall in love with that game. For Morrowind, it's the, the beautiful alien world of um of Vardenfell, uh the giant mushrooms and uh and and various different regions um but and mostly the the uh, the modding capabilities you know it is it's complex enough but it's simple enough it's it's you know it's that sweet spot where i really feel comfortable and that's why i love morrowind so much um oblivion a lot of people, I've seen a lot of people commenting, um, Oblivion is a beautiful game. Oblivion really can be a beautiful, amazingly looking game. Uh, of course, depending on the mods you use, depending on the mods you, you, you install, I couldn't play Oblivion without um, <clears throat> Oblivion character overhaul, uh, which really uh, 
makes the characters look normal. Uh, I think that uh, Nuska, the modder, really did a great job with it. So, you know, kudos to her. Um, Oblivion has this medieval knightly feel to it. Um, kind of like um, uh, Central European, so to say, um, you know, with castles and in the forests and stuff like that, which is um, which is native to me. You know, it is known to me uh, because, you know, I, I live in this region, you know, Central Europe, where, um, you know, vistas like that are familiar to me and uh, they, they definitely feel... Um, uh, at home, they they feel um, natural, so to say. I, I that's why I love Oblivion so much. That whole you know nightly, majestic feel of it all. And then and, you know you have Skyrim, um, which is just you know bigger than life, dragons and icy mountains and uh, you know strong burly Nords singing. Uh, and sovereign guard, you know, and mead, and 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 it has this really barbaric, um, barbaric note to it, which which I respond responded to really well, apparently. Uh, in in the visuals, you know, the, the entire visual design of it all. Um, again, I think that the the team who did the concept art for um, for the ruins and for the exteriors and different statics. Uh, I think they've done a, done a really good job. Everything fits. Everything looks really, really nice. Um, and yeah, that's why I like Skyrim so much. Now, as for the modding community, I don't know. I'm, I'm really not that active within the community except on Bethesda forums. And uh, even then, I'm only on the, in the Morrowind section. So um, I can't really, you know, speak globally when it comes to all these various um, titles and modern communities uh, connected to them. But what I can say for Morrowind is that um, it really is uh, a tight-knit community uh, with members that know each other for years. And... Um, at the same time, they are open uh, towards new modders like me. Um, and, uh, you know, you can always count for um, a piece of advice or an answer or a link if you're looking for something. And, uh, you know, even if you're working on a mod, for instance, I've been for my um, races redone, I've actually got kudos and uh, recognition who openly said that they are not using my mod for, for various reasons um, you know and, and, and that's okay but still even though they're not using my mod they you know, you know they were there and they said like good job I, I you know I, I'm I like what I see here keep going I think it looks good I think you could you know really pull something out of it Um I'm glad that someone's here who is thinking these things from a different point of view, uh, someone who's trying something different. Uh, and um, what I hope for that um, once OpenMW um, gets out and uh, Morwen gets expanded, we're going to get more modders, um, more people who are going to start thinking about certain things a different way. And um, possibly bring us some new and amazing mods. Now, sort of going into that, uh, what do you think makes the Morrowind modding community so vibrant after more than a decade? The, lo the love towards the game. I think that's the simplest and most honest answer. Um, it's been 10 years and Morrowind is still a game um, that is being modded and it's still a game that's being worked on um, and uh, it's the community uh, you know people who fell in love with the game and are still working on it and 
you know, this is, I think this is the ultimate love letter to Bethesda and to the development team of, of Morrowind, people who worked on Morrowind, that even after 10 years, uh, people are still playing it and people are still uh, enjoying it. So, um, you know, they, they, they did something right. <laughs> they did something right at Bethesda when making Morrowind because, um, you know, 10 years later, the game is still going on strong and will continue to go on uh, strong. So, yeah, I think that's, um, that's the basis. And then, of course, all the people who know each other, people who've um, modded the game for years. And uh, it, it kind of creates this community and community feel that, that feels comfortable. Um and people just enjoy going there with time, not so much uh, for mods, but for, for the people who make that community themselves. Now, uh, do you think there's anything the modern modding community should be doing in order to continue to expand and grow in the coming years? Well, no, I don't think that, um, I don't think anything should be forced, so to say, uh, the community has been doing great because it's been 10 years and it still exists. So uh, I think that Morrowind as a game will continue to be an inspiration for people um, simply because it's so unique. Um, all people really have to do is play the game and love playing it. And that's it. Uh, all the inspiration in all the future mods will come on their own, um, especially again, I know I'm probably being boring, but uh, with open MW around the corner, um, you know, more scripting capabilities, more modeling capabilities, more texturing capabilities. I think that's just on a, it, it's only going to give a boost to the entire modern community and, uh, you know, for the next, <laughs> for the following 10 years, Morrowind could uh, experience uh, um, a, a renaissance, so to say. It could be, um, it could become more than its developers have ever dreamed of it ever being. Now, uh, sort of wrapping up, is there any advice you'd like to give to budding new Morrowind modders out there looking to release their first mod? Hmm. Um, keep at it. I think that would be that would be the most important thing. Keep at it. Uh, keep working on it. Keep doing it uh, because uh, that's the only way you're going to get better. Um, join the community. Definitely join the community. Join the Bethesda forums. There's a bunch of really nice and 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 kind and great people there who are going to help you. And. Um, um, Come over, uh, get your free complimentary fishy stick, and um, join the community and just play the game. Play the game and you're going to get all the inspiration you will ever need uh, for making mods. Of course, uh, combined with listening to right soundtracks. Now, uh, finally, is there anyone in the community you'd like to uh, give a shout out to? Ooh, um, a lot of people, actually, uh, because um, I received so much feedback from my mods from people that, you know, I, I don't even, I don't remember <laughs> all the names. Um, but off the top of my head, definitely uh, a big thank you to uh, Herknamd, I think that's the way it's pronounced, um, who who really, really helped uh, my project, um, Voices Redone mod, you know, take a lift off. Uh, he's the one who modified the Better Bodies mesh uh, to my heads. And um, I don't think I would be able to do it without him. So, you know, he really, like, he really, uh, he was really my knight in shining armor um, when, I, when I needed one. And uh, so, a big, big, big thank you to him. Um, uh, 
who else? Um, I don't know all the all the people really who um, who comment on my mods, um, the people who give suggestions um, and opinions. They really are appreciated. Um, without them, really, this this whole modding thing wouldn't be as fun, and it definitely would be as much of a learning experience as it is right now. Um, and yeah, just. Um, Everybody in the community who's um, who's there, looking, going through threads, um, giving comments, um, offering suggestions, linking, helping in any way they can. Um, really, if anything, the Morrowind's modding community is is a phenomenon for itself. And uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm definitely really really glad that I'm you know a tiny part of it. Um, and ultimately to you, Dark Elf Guy, for you know re re reviving um, the modding scene with with this series of yours. Um, I think it's a great thing. I think you're doing a great job. And uh, definitely keep doing it the way you're doing it because. You're doing it right. Yeah, well, thank you, and uh, that pretty much wraps up all my questions I have for you, so... It's been a lot of fun talking to you, and again, thanks for doing this interview. Not a problem, thank you for inviting me, and uh, I hope I haven't talked your ears off, uh, and that all this incoherent nonsense made some sense. Um, so, yeah. Keep playing Morrowind, keep enjoying Morrowind, keep modding Morrowind, and I will see you on the forums. Alright, now that uh, concluded our interview with Maccom. Very interesting interview, a talented Morrowind and Skyrim martyr, and let's not forget a professional freelancer in the video game industry. Uh, next week, we're supposed to have Yeti, Though, that isn't exactly set in stone, since he was supposed to be on this week. Uh, if we don't have Yeti, we'll have Milk or Dark on, which will, either way, they're both very interesting motters, so you'll have that to look forward to. Uh, thanks for listening, and I'll see you guys next time.